MJD, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe because it helps me. And please hit like. I'm up to 26,000 subscribers. I'd like to get to 30 by the end of next week if it's possible. It helps my channel so you guys can see what I'm doing. I do both watch work and I do comedic shorts, which I really like. I've got a sense of humor. I used to do stand-up when I was in school. So they're doing very well, and my watch work has always done very well. So so there you go. So today I just want to do a video here. It's like an unboxing, but I had a gentleman, his name is Paul, showed up at my house. Uh, we went for lunch, and he's part of the Watch and Clock Society. It's called the, I think, Watch and Clock Collectors Society of Ottawa, Canada. A. E? And he, uh, he showed up, and he had a really nice little box here. And I said, what's that all about? He said, well... He said, those are platform balances. I'm like, oh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> so these are platform balances. So I'm going to use this, my, my wife's father's knife from years ago to open us up and have a look at it. So this is an unboxing of sorts, right? I need to put on my can't see a damn thing glasses. Oh, and I had an idea for the uh, new Trump government. I think I'm going to submit my name to become the... Um, the Secretary of Time. It's the Secretary of Time because he's inventing departments now. So I think if he were to invent the Secretary of Time, that'd make sure that everybody arrived at, in meetings at the exact same coordinated time. So they need a watchmaker for this particular job, right? So I'm going to submit my name and we'll see what happens, whether the U.S. Senate will pass me as the Secretary of Time for the U.S. government. Now, the thing is, I'm Canadian, so that could be an issue, but it might not be an issue because you're allowed breaking a few rules, I hear. So so here we go. Here are the goods in the box. Now, I haven't seen these yet, so I'm going to very carefully open these up. There's goods number one, um, and it's got stuff on it. So it says, balance, start, pivot, broken, locking, pin, something, spring. Whatever that means. That's, I think that's German for the watch is screwed. So this is the platform balance. As I've said before, um, I've given you a description. I'm going to grab it right here before I start and show you that this is a clock, a clock. And you see that balance on the top there? That is a platform balance. And if I put a little bit of a wind on this clock, and we're going to do that right now <clears throat> it hasn't been wound up in a few weeks but i'm going to wind this and you're going to see this thing go into go into action so and this is a it's called a carriage clock and the platform balance is probably called platform balance because it stays in this position regardless so it's in this position all the time uh, they're just beautiful to look at i think so this balance operates fundamentally the same as a pocket watch balance. You have the escape wheel you can see on the right hand side and it's interacting with the impulse jewel which is on the roller table of this particular balance and it's making it go back and forth, right? So same sort of thing. And the lever on top here uh, is just like in a pocket watch and you move that lever left or right to speed it up and slow it down which is basically adjusting the effective length of the hairspring. That's how these work. And there, this one says Swiss. I can see the word Swiss there, right there. Um, so this is Swiss made. Um, and it's a platform balance and a mapping and web carriage clock that I own. So this balance, I've stripped this carriage clock down and cleaned it. And I'm not a clock guy, for se. Pocket watches and watches. Not a clock guy, but the boys like me repivoting. So <clears throat> I, I am able to repivot a, a platform balance because it's a lot like a pocket watch. Now the, gut, the guts, the innards of this thing look like this. And if you can see that gear, that's the sideways gear would be the equivalent of the gear that would be pushing the escapement, but it's going into a pinion. And you can see that right on the top. I'll use my knife to point. So right up here is that pinion there. And this is the gear here. There's a name for that, but I don't know the name. So that's pushing that along. Uh, so it's just like a big giant pocket watch, except it's not. So I'm sure the design came from the pocket watch world. And the mainspring in here is pretty nasty. This thing here is the mainspring. It's pretty big. So this is where these pocket watches, these these platform balances that I'm going to be working on come from. <clears throat> the good news is 
I've got more than a day to do it. So Paul said, you know, you can take a week or two or whatever to get, to get these things done. And I love a challenge, so I'll work on these too. Um, I'm also going to be working on the um, disassembly of of the Fusée uh, pocket watch that I received and I had in a previous video, so I'll be working on that as well. And next week, my hip will be a bit better. I'll be able to sit in front here, and but I'll probably get some uh, an email telling me that I have become the Secretary of Time for the U.S. government under the uh, Trump administration. So let's hope for that, folks. And uh, let's cut over and look at these, these uh, platform balances. Now, I'm thinking they're called a platform balance, but unlike a pocket watch, this balance in a pocket watch can be all in all different positions. In a, in a carriage clock, it's always in this position. So it's always horizontal like this and not in a vertical position or sideways or whatever. So unlike a pocket watch, so we should be able to regulate these things really well because they don't, there isn't all of different positions and all the impact of being in those different positions on the, on the uh, escapement wheel, which is in, in the back. You can see that thing moving right there or, and or the balance and the, and the, sh the end shake of the pivot going up and down in there. It's always the same. So should be even more accurate than a pocket watch for sure. And one last thing, once you wind these buggers up completely using the key that you see down here and winding it on the shaft there and setting the time up a little bit higher. Um, so you wind it right here and you set the time right here. Uh, this thing will run for a week. So it's a seven day clock, which is, which is really nice. It's like my sessions clock also runs for a week and it's a mantle clock. So these, these carriage clocks will tick away for a week. And I do think they're beautiful. If you just look at that for a second, it's a piece of, it's a piece of artwork. So, so now looking at this really carefully, um, I want to see if the balance is actually moving freely. So I can just take my finger and very lightly move the balance. And I can see the balance is moving freely. So there may not be a broken pivot in here. I'm still not sure. Um, I can also just lift it up but, uh, with my th fingers just ever so slightly, just not grabbing it. But And so this one here seems to be in place. So I have to check once I understand that that's working, right? I can also check and see that I've got all the, all the feet on the escape wheel and there's no issue there. Um, I also want to make sure, so I'm assuming the pivots are okay on this when I disassemble it. Um, I also want to make sure the impulse jewel that's on the, um, that's uh, in there and the impulse jewels on the roller table, like on a pocket watch, whether that impulse jewel is actually not loose or it's in shape. So that's good there. Um, and the only way for me to test this after I run it is to, and I did this before, either take a piece of Rotico or take a, a rubber stick and put some power onto the pinion back here to move that, uh, yeah, move, move that uh, wheel to see if it's interacting properly with the balance. So I'll look at this under the on the electron the electron microscope. No, it's the stereo microscope. I'll look at this through my stereo microscope to make sure I'm not seeing things that are not good. The other thing is that I, I can see the balance is a bit twisted. You see that gap in the balance right here? This gap right, bring this in here, right there. It looks like this side is a bit higher than the other side, so I'll have to by hand actually move that gap so I don't have that problem and make sure they're they're level. Otherwise the the, the part the one that low is lower looks like it's going to touch the bridge that's holding the pallet fork in place. I'm assuming that's a pallet there's a pallet fork in there right now. So we'll <clears throat> we'll look at that under the uh, stereo microscope to see what the problem might be. But the good news here is that it looks like the balance is is kind of good. And it looks like the hairspring is intact as well. So I'm going to also look at the hairspring to make sure I don't have a, a fouled up hairspring in this. So that's that's a platform balance number one. Um, and I want to put that aside and be able to wrap it up. I'll just put this tissue back on here and I'll put that into a watch case after. And let's bring out platform balance numero de. So the note on this one says broken pivot. So there's a broken pivot on balance seat, I think, maybe, or whatever. So I'm not sure upper, upper or lower. And then it says Buckham missing. Not sure what that is. Um, 
hairspring adjusting level. So again, uh, the previous watchmaker has got some some of his own language for this. Uh, so I'm just going to remove these notes and I'll put those um, on the case that I put put it in to make sure that uh, the notes travel with the piece and I don't lose the notes in case there's something I really need to know. Although once I've unwrap this and had a good look at it, I'll understand what the problem is. And there we go. And there's this balance. It looks a lot similar to the other balance here. And again, um, it looks like the hairspring is coning a bit upward. So I can see that right away. There's a bit of a cone on the hairspring. Uh, it, it looks like the pivots are I don't think the pivots are broken, but maybe the pivot is broken somewhere. Yeah, I think the pivot might be, the lower pivot might be broken because this, the balance looks like it's almost touching the bridge there. Uh, and that bridge is holding the pallet fork again in place. And I don't know whether there's a, a pivot broken on the escapement wheel. And I don't think there is. I'm moving the escapement wheel and doesn't seem to be any play there. It looks like the lower pivot on this balance is toast so we're gonna to have to strip this balance down and and then look at the the balance and the hairspring hopefully that's okay and then look and see whether there's a broken pivot on the end of this thing so we can have a quick look at that so that shouldn't be too difficult and maybe we'll we'll do that one we'll do this one right now and have a look at it so here's my watch watch containers here watch jars or whatever that I have so what I'll do is strip these notes off just so I don't lose them um, and I'm not sure if that'll go back nicely but I'm just going to take them off for now like that and I can stick them on the jar or stick them put them in here like that and then one like this like that and then I'll use the other side of the jar to hold the parts um, one thing I found that's very useful I want to I want to take this block and make a tool out of it um, and I'll maybe do that next week but I want a, a tool that actually holds the balance in place well you can play with the balance itself the screws all that stuff but it's solid in place and I can screw this in right so so I have to have a clamping mechanism for this because all the screws are different so I have to have a method of clamping this balance down after I put it in place so I figured out what kind of design I need to do that but this is a big giant piece of brass I think so but in the meantime let me reach back to my tools here and I think I've got um, a couple of these here I know that I can use uh, my block here and that should hold the um, the center one or even the end one no, center one no these are bigger than what I have so I'd have to hold it over the edge right now so that's holding that over the edge um, so so I don't really need to waste my time with this block because I can hold it over the edge with this. This is very heavy. This block here is very heavy. So this is giving me good real estate to unscrew the balance. Um, again, you want to make sure everything is kind of steady, but I've got this, the, um, the pinion for the uh, escapement wheel sticking down pretty low. So it's going to look kind of like that when you're doing it. Uh, and I want to loosen that balance on the top and then pick it straight up. And after I've picked it straight up, I want to put it down onto a balance uh, a, a balance cock of some sort or a balance tack of some sort. So let me get myself a balance tack. So this is the dual balance tack that I made uh, quite a few years ago, actually. So it's two tacks. They are screwed in there, as you can see in the bottom surface here. And I've got a little, I made a little jar for holding the uh, screw. And I will use probably the lower one so that the balance can rest nicely and in between here. But we'll see. We'll see once I take the balance off where that should rest. Now, the, again, the good thing about a platform balance is that it always stays in this position. It doesn't, it, it never um, goes sideways like you would on a pocket watch. A pocket watch balance actually runs sideways most of the time, even though people will put that in their drawer and not look at it for a lot of years. So... So there's this screw was loose as heck already. So I'll take that out and just lift that up here and then put that in 
the jar so I know where it is. And now I'll get a, a smaller screwdriver. Um, not sure what size I need, but I want to wedge that in here, right? So this block is pretty darn handy, actually. So if I wedge that in here, I should be able to just turn this to uh, enter some sort of guidance uh, uh, knobs. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'd call those things, but um, the pins in the bottom that fit into the plate that align it. So alignment pins, maybe, is a good enough name for today. So this should all come out as one unit, right? And I shouldn't have to worry about the hairspring or anything. So this should come straight up as one unit. There we go. So that's the balance coming out. And now I can put that balance here on the tack. And I'm going to try using this tack because it's going to allow the balance to rest uh, in between. And I'm not sure how far down it'll go, but I've got to line that up first, though, before I put it on the tack. Where is that tack? It's right there. There we go. So that's going down on the tack like that. And then the balance is resting. Um, I want to have the pivot. Um, I want to have it sort of like that. So it's between these faux leather pads. These are these are actually faux leather. They're not real leather. So, so it's sitting there nicely on the tack. Um, it's not as level because of the tapering of it. But I've got other. I, I could put it on the tack, which would allow it to hang here, and then lift it up and look at the actual pivots on both sides to see where they're sitting, um, <clears throat> and whether those pivots are are busted or not. I did buy myself. Um, another airy loop that's times 10 and that times 10 airy loop will allow me to look at directly at the end of those pivots so I'm gonna see if I can find that loop I think this is the loop I've got three of them I think this is the right loop um, I'm not absolutely sure but I think this is the right loop so I'm gonna put this on my glasses and have a look at this uh, balance but I think I'll put it on the longer um, one of the tacks so it can so I can actually just grab it and move it over the other thing I could do because I'm going to clean this all up is just use the balance where it is right now and take the spring off of it but there's a there is a a pin that needs to be removed to do that and I'd have to remove the pin so I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink my body down here so this turned out to be not the times 10 it's just another version of a times 5 so I'm gonna go find my times 10 I found my times 10. Let me move this out of the way here for a second. And there it is there. And so I think I purchased this about four months ago just so I could use it for lathe work. This is some serious magnification in there. You can even see it looking at it like that. But I think I'm going to put it on a different pair of glasses. I'm putting it on my normal viewing glasses that I've got around my neck here, these ones here. Um, and I got the Maxi, which is the extra large grip on it uh, which is good um, the other one was kind of a mini or normal which is for smaller glasses so but this is the maxi and it's the times 10 i think at least times 10 if you can see that you look like bubbles from the trailer park boys if you're canadian out there so i'm going to have a look at the um, i'll be able to put this on and then and then look very, very closely at the pivots here to make sure it's right. So to start though, I'm going to, for disassembly, put the other glasses on. I got way too many glasses here. I do recommend the airy loop. I'll just put the case up really quickly. There's the loop there. This number uh, 6223G, that's for the times 10. Make sure you get a maxi. See how it says maxi there? For bigger glasses, it's, it works a lot better. It's, it's Bergeon. Swiss made, uh, they cost a bit of money, but but 150 bucks, um, probably 160 up 200 bucks I think Canadian. So, so which is what what 10 bucks US. So, <laughs> I love fooling people from the US. So I'm looking at this right now, and there's a pin in there holding the uh, the balance in place, and I'll have to remove that pin um, and remove the balance. So, to remove that hairspring. So it's not an easy job, but it's doable. So I want to be able to take that, very carefully push that pin out. And I can see, looking at it, which side I need to push. So 
I've done this before. Um, I have a pair of pliers that I use for this that are they're just plain pliers that I like this and they're flat on the end and I can sometimes get in there with those pliers to push the pin in. I find that using the um, I find using using a of tweezers just isn't strong enough to do that job. But if I use pliers, I can sometimes get in there and push that pin. You got to be able to push that pin. So I know it has to go this way. So I need to brace the pliers on one side of something and be able to push the pin on the other side. You don't want to slip when you're doing this kind of work because if you slip, you could ruin the hairspring. So you got to be really careful. So if it doesn't seem like I've got a good grip on things here, I'll back off and not do it. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it's pushing out. Um, I may try this with tweezers. But these parts have been in here forever. So that's the other problem I have, is that it's not an easy job because the parts have been in place for a long, long time. Now the other thing I can do is do this under a microscope. I can also flip the whole thing around so that the balance is laying on its stomach, but these balances are tricky though because they, they've got, they don't go flat the other way, they want to rock. Right, so, and that's not rock and roll rock. You just want to rock. So I don't know if that pin will come out that way. And I'm trying to push it, but push it with my tweezers. Yeah, that's not going to work. So that there is not coming out that way, so I can get another pair of tweezers here. Um, these tweezers here are angled, which might help me. Uh, I don't again. I don't know whether it will or not, but it might help me get under here and grab these things and press. No, that's not moving either. So I might have to. Uh, I got to figure this thing out. Oot. I want to figure out actually which end of the, uh, I can see the fat end of this thing. So the worst case situation here is if I put a lot of pressure on here and then it slips and hits the hairspring and then I end up bending the hairspring and I don't want to bend the hairspring. So I've got to be super careful. I want to be able to think about this again. Um, I might be able to put this up against a bench block and then tap it um, very carefully with uh, with maybe um, a a uh, a stake for my staking set. So if I take my staking set and grab a a stake that's relatively small on one end, like that, a stake like that, and I'm able to basically put the stake on the edge of this thing and brace this side on the other side. I might be able to tap this to tap it out. Again, that's tricky work too, and I'm not sure whether I want to, to to let the hairspring hang while I do that. So I don't want to do that either. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go away and think about this for a second. All right, I haven't taken the balance out yet, but I didn't want to have a look and see what what I have what the problem might be on this watch. I, so I can see right away that the upper pivot on here looks fine. Um, there's no issue at all. But I'm looking at the lower pivot, and the lower pivot does not look good. It looks like it's broken off. So the first thing I want to do when I find that I've got a broken off lower pivot um, is see if that pivot is, is in fact still remaining um, in the watch movement. So if I look at the platform of the platform balance, um, I want to be able to, to look inside the hole of the platform to see whether the pivot is still in there. I don't think it is, but I'll look under the uh, a microscope to see if it's still there. So if it's still there, I need to remove that. Uh, this would have a capsule configuration that needs to be removed anyway for cleaning. 
um, and everything else would be fine, right? So, so the big poo poo, right? So I need to figure that out. It looks like the pallet fork is working fine with the escapement, not a problem, nothing's wrong there. So I think this job is just repivoting. I think it's a repivot job, which means I need to uh, probably make it a little longer than it needs to, to be. So it's either you repivot it or you make a brand new balance staff. Hopefully I can repivot it without having to make a brand new balance staff. But that's that's the problem with this one. So I can put this aside as the diagnostics are done. So it's a lower pivot that needs to be redone. And I do need to figure out how to take this, um, how to get the pin out of here. It's probably a simple job, but I'll think about it. I'll worry about that later. Um, so, and then I'll be able to, to deal with this whole balance configuration because I'll have to take off the hairspring and strip it down as well. So that's that one. So that's a repivot job. So lower pivot needs to be redone. So I'll put this this configuration into my jar here and then put the lid on it and deal with it. But I want to make a note first. So I always love the CSI Miami and uh, Chicago PD, which we're watching right now. And they always have these cool little books they write notes in. So I went on <coughs> Amazon to look for a cool little book to write notes in. I found a cop book with a whole bunch of inserts as I have it. So now I can take my cop book here and I need to... I think I already uh, wrote my notes for my hip replacement here walking restrictions and don't tell bad jokes and stuff like that but now i can write in my book here and just say lower lower pivot re-pivoted so that that'll save me some time and then i put the note in the box so here i wrote lower pivot and i don't want to use all my paper why would i do that right so i can just cut this off like this i have the world's best pair of scissors by the way so there's Cut that off like that, open up my watch jar, um, round it up a bit, and then stuff that in. So it says lower pivot, put that on top, and now I've got lower pivot. So now I know exactly what to do for that job. And this will be done after I set my lathe up for all of the work that I need to do to repivot. So same thing on this one here. Um, I need to remove the balance on this one here to see the uh, the balance complete to see the condition of the pivot on this one. So in the same manner, I'm get this big brass block out here. I have um, that's a monster of a block, and just remove the balance in the same way I did before. And I have to move this out of the way here. Let's see if I can just twist this. Man, this thing is stuck. No, it moves. It just needs cleaning folks it needs cleaning this thing has not been cleaned for a million years so i think i'll just take the screw out here um, i may have to switch glasses because i'm using these are the ones with the times 10 and they're not going to help me at all for doing this so i'll get the ones with the double lens so i've got a lower lens that's a times three and then i've got this which is a five but i won't need it for just viewing downward um, and i just unscrew the balance here just like i did before and this was loose and I'm not sure if this is loose because the last watchmaker was working on this and and knew what the problem was uh, but this was given to me by um, Paul a friend of mine who said this needs some work so I just use my screwdriver on the edge here and just go like that and I just want to remove this balance cock here from the uh, from the platform And I've got to put this on a balance tack as well. I've used up one of my tacks. I know I have another smaller balance tack that's a single tack. I'm not sure where that is. I'll have to find that before this thing pops out. Um, I also have this here, which sometimes works if it's if all of these line up properly. And I have it all the way out on this side here. And this sometimes will work. So let's try this out here. I just very carefully lift that straight up and I can rest this in here 
and then put this down like that. I think it will lower this a bit though. Like that. Hope you're seeing all this. The whole thing is to have good control. And there we go. So now that's sitting on the tack. It's lowered. I'm going to have a look at the uh, this part of the movement here to make sure everything is working fine. Um, this is a bit stiff, I think. So the problem with the... Uh, this is a, the version of a parallel uh, pallet fork. So these pallet forks were, were like in the 1800s, they made them like that until they, when they came, came up with the pallet fork. Um, and I've got a bunch of used ones of these, but they're for pocket watches. So I want to make sure nothing gets broken here for this. So it's a, I'll have to strip this down and clean this up as well as part of the job. Um, I also check the end shake um, right here on the, uh, on the escape wheel to see what that looks like. And it looks pretty good, actually. It's not... There's not a lot of end shake on that, which is good, and it seems to be, seems to move nicely, which is also good. So, so I'll put this aside, and again, I'll get another jar out because I like my jars. Uh, and I've got probably 15 of these jars for when the jobs start picking up, and I want to make sure that I'm storing things properly so they can't be uh, damaged in the future. So I'll just put this aside like that. And this also had some writing on it, I believe. I believe there was a piece of paper that said something on this. I'll have to find that piece of paper. I'm talking a lot today. I apologize. These are just pieces of tissue paper that Buddy put these things on. And I can't find anything on this one. Although I think I, I had something uh, before. But did I take those off? I don't know. It doesn't matter because I'll be looking at it anyway. So I'll put this aside for now. And now I want to have just a quick look at the uh, the balance itself to see if there's a pivot broken on the top or bottom. Now I can just look look bring that up to my eye and have a quick look at the balance, and I can tell whether the pivot is there or not. So the upper pivot here is is good; it's intact. And now just by hand lift the balance up off of the tack, and then rotate the balance slightly. And have a look at the bottom and it's broken and you can see it quite easily so I'm going to see if I can get the camera in nice and close so you can see what that looks like so both of these had broken pivots on the bottom now the trick is can I repivot these or will I have to make a brand new balance staff the uh, bad news in both of these are they're put in by a pin not a screw which is a bit of a pain yeah, this one looks like it's glued in or something, and it looks like the hairspring uh, has been, in fact, bent on this one here on the top. So it looks like there's a hairspring issue as well on this thing, which is not good. And the only reason it's got a hairspring is an issue is if somebody actually pushed this the other way. I pushed it uh, towards the thing, but it looks like the hairspring needs adjusting here, which wouldn't be too bad. It also looks like the cap jewel on the top of this is cracked, and I can see that as well. So I'm just going to bring out a different. I'm going to bring out my uh, my my microscope uh, that's got a camera on it, so you can see this up close. All right, there's a good shot of that upper upper jewel. I'm pointing at it right now. As you can see, that looks like it's cracked all the heck. So the upper jewel is cracked on this balance, so that needs to be replaced. And if I look at the balance itself, I'm going to try to just grab this live and interactive and show you the end of that balance. So let's just pull this up a little bit like that. And I'm going to grab this with my hands and I'm going to see if I can just manipulate this so you can see it. So there's the end of the balance staff. And you can see the balance, the pivot is cracked right off. So that needs to be redone. There's the roller table and the jewel that looks fine. Um, but this will be just taken apart. Uh, there's the hairspring. Everything's fine there. Um, and I've got to... The other thing I need to do is re remove this hairspring. And I think that there's probably going to be a fun job because there's the hairspring going into the stud and I can't see anything, any stud on the other end. So I'm not sure how this thing is fitted in. So this might be a challenge to remove this as well. So it's just... 
dangle this here for a second, but that's the uh, that is the broken capsule that needs to be replaced. So that's not good. Um, and we'll just put this on the tack again for a second, uh, just so I have control over the piece. You never want to leave a, a piece just hang, dangling there because the, the worst situation is if you foul up the hairspring. So, so that's it there, and then again, there's another shot of that uh, that uh, upper capsule. So, in closer examination, it looks like the hairspring isn't even in place here. So. You can see this here, there's the hairspring there, and this isn't even in place. So that was that's one of the main issues, I think. So it'll be pretty easy for me to take this apart. Um, I just need to simply turn uh, the regulator pin here uh, very carefully. And you usually do that with a screwdriver on the top, or you can use a pair of tweezers like I'm doing. But if I take a very small screwdriver, it should fit into the slot on the top. And then I can turn this um, like so. Let me see if I can do this here. This has been in this situation for years. I don't want anything to slip. And there we go. It's out of the way like that. And now the hair, the whole balance should just lift up and out of here. There we go. And now if I look at that jewel on the bottom, and just do a close-up on that jewel on the bottom, um, am I going to see it looking pretty bad or not, right? That's the question. So zooming in on that bottom jewel, and I've got myself a flashlight in my hand here. Uh, the bottom jewel doesn't look so great either. Now I'm going to look at this under a stereo microscope, but it looks like it might have issues as well. Um, I'd have to clean this up a bit with some Rodico to get some of the get rid of some of the 200 year old crap that's on here or however old it is <laughs> It may only be 150 years old, but if I spin that around and I just dab that with Rodico see if it's any more visible What does that look like? Still doesn't look great. I'm going to just try to see if I can zoom in a bit more here That's about a good, as good a close-up I can get on this here. But I think under my, my stereo microscope, I'll be able to get in nice and tight. So this jewel might have to be replaced as well. And then for sure, uh, we've got a, a highly damaged uh, cap jewel on the top here, as you can see. That looks pretty cracked. That looks like it's a write-off. So that's, work on that's going to have to happen as well. And then again... On the balance, I'll show you a top view of the balance here, and we'll just have a quick look at this again. And you'll see that the the pivot, there's a, you kind of have to zoom out to see the balance, but there's the impulse jewel, and there is the pivot on the very end, and it's snapped off. So that's that pivot needs to be, I can try to re-pivot this. Um, I'm going to make sure I do all the measurements properly, because if I don't, Repivot it properly. I have to build a new balance staff, which I'm able to do, but I don't. It's a lot longer, I believe, to build a balance staff than to actually repivot it. So, so we'll see. I'll use the pivot on the other side for measuring. So I'll just flip this around for a second, and the other side has got a pivot that's in decent condition. Um, as you can see, there's the pivot there, and they should be the same size pivot. Although I'll do all my measuring. I'm going to measure. 15 times and cut once so that's this is what it looks like so this is going to be this watch this platform balance is going to be a bit of a challenge but like i said before it's all doable so there we go so that's the um that's the platform balance there let me get this back in view here right there see if i can lay this thing down and there it is there and that's the good pivot and i can use the good pivot right there to measure the other side and make sure I've got it all right when I when I go ahead and repivot this. So my CSI Miami would tell me that I've got a problem here. I've got a bent hairspring that I gotta deal with with this particular watch. Um, I'm not too concerned about putting this down because the lower pivot is broken. So I can just put it in like that. 
Um, the balance cock is good with the exception of the jewels on the top and the bottom. What I don't know is the condition of the, the lower jewel um, on the plate itself or the platform part itself. So I'll put that under a stereo microscope and have a look at that and see if the jewel needs to be replaced there. And then we'll get on with the job. So next time you see me, I'll likely be repairing this particular platform balance. But i got to get my CSI Miami notepad out here. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm losing my voice. I'm just talking too much today. But get my notepad out here. And I'm going to write on this thing, lower, lower, pivot. And then hairspring, HS. Bent at stud, even though I don't think it has a stud, it's got a uh, it would be pinned in, but I'll have a quick look at that and see whether there was a pin or it needs to be pinned. So, so that's that, and of course, just like I did before from an anal retentive perspective, I'm just going to cut this out of my little book here. Just in case the police call me up and say we got we found a body between Third and Seventh Street. Can you come quickly? We need a watchmaker. <laughs> Think that'll happen? Nope. There we go. Just put that in the, the container here, and then put the lid in the container, and then we've got it's cricket. We've got cricket. There we go. So that's it for today's video video. See, so I've got three sets of these airy loops now, eh? so there's no out airying me. So the other thing that I recommend when you put these watch parts together again is put a rubber band around the case here, because if you accidentally hit the case and it flies off, you'll regret it. You'll lose a part. I've had them over the years. I had these big long cases with parts in it, and I just sort of, it sort of snapped or something, and actually there were probably about uh, 30 little compartments and pieces from one compartment jumped into the other compartment because I didn't have the thing properly strapped down. And it was like, oh my God, I had to reorganize the whole damn thing. So, so now I've learned my lesson. So always put a rubber band on the top here. If it breaks, put another one on. So this one here again, lower pivot needs to be replaced. So I'll, do, I'll likely do a repivoting to replace it. And there's a bent uh, basically the hairspring is bent on the end and it's it needs to be put into restudded or restudded into the uh, into where it attaches to the um, the balance cock so that needs to be restudded so that those are the jobs so thanks for watching this quick video this is the prep work and then just a quick diagnostics on these two platform balances for four carriage clocks so thanks a lot JD here thanks for subscribing to my channel and watching my videos life is all good thanks a lot bye bye